I did an impossible chess challenge. The challenge, win a chess game in bullet, blitz, and rapid, while all my chess pieces look like checkers. This challenge forced me to sack my queen, bishop, and make a comeback so crazy you have to see it to believe it. Sit back and relax as you see the most hilarious chess games of your life. I played e4 and he responded with the Karl Khan defense. I played the advanced variation before trading bishops and castling. And then, for no reason at all, I just sacked my queen. And at this point, I knew I was screwed, so I panicked and lost my center pawns. He then allowed me to fork his king and his rook. And here, my 100 elo brain kicked in. I thought, C queen, attack queen. And that actually led me to winning the rook. After winning a couple more pawns, my opponent pushed his A pawn down the board. So I pushed my own pawn before poking and prodding with my rook. I sacked my knight to deflect his knight to allow my rook to target the A pawn on A8. Here, I missed rook C7 check, but that didn't matter because he sacked his queen anyway and lost on time. And if you thought this game was wild, wait till you see the other games. Trust me, it only gets crazier. Now, you may be wondering why the heck am I torturing myself by doing this challenge? Well, it's because of this video here. More specifically, it's because I said that if I made 10 or more blunders while playing a circular chess bot, I would do this challenge. Like in the last game, I played an advanced Karl Khan, except this time my opponent is almost a thousand elo. This is going to be difficult. He captures my center pawn before he trade queens, which gives him a double isolated B pawn. I lose my last center pawn and trade my dark squared bishop before I lose my A pawn. At this point, I'm like, screw it, let's go for back rank mate, which he defends, except he ends up losing both knights. Technically, I am lost in this endgame, but I at least have three pawns. Yeah, I lose all three pawns really, really fast, and I'm completely lost no chance of winning but don't worry i still win this game you just have to believe in me and if you believe in me like and subscribe below so i can know that you actually believe in me we shuffle pieces around before i win one pawn and after a pestering his king my opponent was so annoyed that he allowed me to grab another pawn then he blundered and i win his rook after winning his remaining pawns i squeeze his king against one side of the board and checkmate him all while my pieces look like checkers all i'm gonna say is even i'm impressed by that in this next game my king decided to go on a small walk of shame before my opponent resigned in this game, I got white and I played the Vienna. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do the Vienna Gambit, but my opponent did sack his bishop. And then after sacking his bishop, he sacked his knight, which was actually one of the top computer moves, surprisingly. I escaped with my king, but was struggling to defend against his many threats. That is, until he traded all his attacking pieces, and I managed to check his king. After winning a pawn and taking my opponent's promoted queen, he resigned. And I think he resigned because of this hilarious combination of moves. Imagine you're a black in this position. It's very natural just to recapture the rook, at which point I play bishop g5. And you can give me some checks, but they don't really lead anywhere since I block with the knight. So instead, you think, oh wait, I'm just gonna attack your knight. You attack my knight, but I leave it undefended and instead have pawn d5 check me. But wait, don't leave the video yet. While I technically did complete the challenge, I can't end the video until I show you these three insane chess games. Not only did I sack my queen and make insane comebacks, but I even made an accidental stalemate. And trust me, you don't want to miss these games. I start off with my tried and true Karl Khan, except this time my opponent played the exchange variation. After trading queens and doubling his f-pawns, my opponent doubled my pawns before castling. After making a terrible trade, I allowed myself to have triple isolated f-pawns. You have tripled isolated c-pawns, you bozo! Like, oh, what are they gonna do? Run ahead, ahead, ahead into each other's butt? Like, come on. After running my king away and defending against his rook and bishop, I launched my queen side pawns forward. After trading a couple pieces, my opponent sacks his rook. We trade off some pawns before I get my opponent into a windmill, if that's what it's called. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically where you alternate checks between the rook and the bishop, allowing you to take as many pieces as you want. After sacking my rook for no reason, I push my h pawn and promote it. And then, as I race to promote my a pawn, I stalemate it. I mean, what the frick? Have you ever seen a stalemate like that? My opponent opened with one of my least favorite openings, which I call the primitive sh on a stick opening, or as it's more commonly known, the Scandinavian defense. After doubling my opponent's pawns, I developed my knight before doubling another set of pawns. We both castled before my opponent started pushing his pawns toward my king. After building a solid wall of pieces, we trade rooks. Then I forgot my bishop existed, and I sacked it. And even though I am down a knight and there is a pawn on h2, I still win. You just have to trust me. After taking his remaining pawns, I pushed my g-pawn toward promotion. I gave a check, and then my opponent sacked their knight. Unfortunately, I did lose that g-pawn, so... I started harassing their rook, hoping that they would eventually blunder it, and I was right. After winning my opponent's remaining pawns, I methodically delivered the kiss of death, also known as the rook and king checkmate. For the first time in this video, I played against the queen's gambit, and after Scandinavian defense, I despise d4 players with a passion. And if you're a d4 player, just switch to c4, or even better, e4, and stop trying to be cool by playing the queen's gambit because you watched the show, I mean like, ooh, play a normal opening. Uh, wait, 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 wait a second. How many people play d4 in chess? Oh shoot, about 25%? Okay, wait, wait, wait. How many people play chess in the world? 605 million people? Wait, 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 let's do the math. 605 times 25%. 
Shoot, I just pissed off 151 million people. My bad. My opponent takes in the center, which I'm pretty sure is not the main line of the Queen's Gambit. Not that I would know. After developing our pieces in Castle Lane, I jump a knight into the center of the board. I trade knights and open up the center. Then, for no reason at all, I hang my queen on f4. Now, you're definitely thinking, he loses this game for sure. I actually win this surprisingly, just trust me. After bringing his pieces toward my king, he ran out of time. Like I said, I did win. I'm the wizard of winning losing positions. And you would not believe some of the games I won while ranking the most popular chess variants. Check out this video on screen where I ranked popular chess variants from blunder to brilliant.